Hi and welcome to the Bible Project Podcast. We've reached together episode 38 of our journey together through the book of Genesis. We've actually reached chapter 3 verse 21 and I've entitled this morning's episode The Real Price of Sin. I'd remind you that the full transcript of all these podcasts is available in any of the audio versions of the podcasts available on the Buzzsprout website or on whatever app you receive your podcast on. So back into Genesis and we're looking at the consequences of God's expulsion from the Garden of Eden. So the first thing that's happened in this passage, if you remember, was Adam named his wife Eve, then thereby demonstrating his belief in the promise of God that he would one day father offspring. But then the second thing that follows up in the next verse, verse 21 says this, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Note it's the Lord God who makes the garments of skin for Adam and his wife. So remember they were naked and when they disobeyed the Lord they realized they were naked so initially they had tried to clothe themselves. So what's the big deal? Well, when they tried to cover themselves, you notice that back in verse 7, they used fig leaves. I suspect it would never have occurred to Adam to cover himself in any other way. You see, he wouldn't have thought to use an animal skin, because at that point, sin hadn't produced death yet. As it said back in verse 7, the eyes of them both were opened, and when they realized they were naked, they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings from themselves. They didn't think to kill an animal. That never occurred to them to do that. They were totally ignorant, probably, of that even being a possibility. So they sew fig leaves together and they cover themselves. Now some New Testament experts would say that whenever you see fig leaf referred to in the New Testament or particularly the Gospel accounts, keep aware of the fact that they may just be a metaphor for good works being used to cover up sin and justify righteousness. Just like they're used here as a way of covering up an awareness of sin. Adam and Eve may have been warned about death back in verse 17 when God had talked about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, reminding them never to eat of it or else they they would die, but they hadn't experienced death yet. Yet here, God, subsequent to their action, chooses to clothe them with an animal skin which means for the first time death arrives in the creation story and an animal dies. In other words, there had to be a shedding of blood to cover the situation they had created. Adam and Eve had disobeyed God and the very next thing we see God do is clothe them, cover them with the skin of an innocent animal, one that had died to provide cover for the consequences of their actions. Another clear picture of salvation, I believe. You see, projecting ahead, Jesus was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, the Bible tells us, and also tells us that when we trust in Christ, we too are clothed with the very righteousness of God, it says. But here God clothed Adam and Eve with the skin of an innocent animal who died in their place. Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for us and we are clothed with his righteousness when we trust in him. So this passage beautifully creates the initial template that illustrates that there will always be two options for anyone who falls short and sins before God. Firstly, you can either try and sew fig leaves together and cover yourself up and cover up your sin. You either try to cover yourself up as a response to your failures or you allow God to provide his covering and his righteousness. That's fascinating to me that this template is created right here back at the very beginning of our Bible. It seems to me that most people today think they can get to heaven by being a good person or being religious or appearing righteous. But what I'm suggesting here is that that this passage tells us that the exact opposite is the case. Now you can amass all the good works you want, but that's not the currency that is used to buy the forgiveness of sin or access to heaven. It's just not going to do that for you. I wonder if any of you have got a monopoly set at home. 
Imagine you took the money, the Monopoly money, the fake money from that game, and tried to take it into your bank and pay it in. I wonder what you think might happen. The Monopoly money may do you a benefit on the Monopoly board, but it isn't going to do anything for you at your local bank. And it's the same with good works. Now don't get me wrong, doing th good things is the right way to live. It will help you live a better, more meaningful life. Doing good things is the correct way to live your life. And people that you come into contact may even benefit from your good works, which is a good thing. It might even help you stay out of jail if you choose to now start doing good things instead of bad things. But in the economy of God, that good stuff you're doing isn't going to pay the designated penalty of sin. Because the penalty of sin, as described in the Bible, is in fact death. There have always been only two ways people try and pay the penalty of their sin. And they're both beautifully illustrated for us here in this passage. You're either going to sew fig leaves together and try to cover yourself with good works or get covered by the sacrifice of the innocent one who died in your place and paid that penalty for death on your behalf. And that's the first consequence of sin and the expulsion from Eden and we'll look at another as we gather together next time. Okay everyone. That's it for this time. Thank you for joining me. Now the place to go to connect to this and any other ministries I'm involved in is the podcast notes section of the audio podcast on the Busprout website. Or by looking in the episode notes section on whatever app provider you use. Within that you'll not only find the transcript of each talk but you'll also find links to all the ministries and the way to connect with us, including the Facebook page, my YouTube channel, and links both to this, the daily podcast, and the Living in Faith Everyday podcast, which is a weekly roundup of all the various Bible study and talks that I'm doing over the period of the preceding week. You'll also find links there to my SoundCloud and my Bandcamp page, where I create the background music and the sound design of these broadcasts. But with that, all I'd like to say is thank you for joining me and I hope to join with you again very soon.